Today I want to talk to you about something that just happened to me or occurred to me this morning and last night. I'll start with last night. John and I had been watching the series Fatal Attraction when the one last night they're showing the girl that is kind of crazy. <laughs> They're showing her talking to her therapist. She's discussing her father. She grew up with a really toxic father in a very, very toxic relationship and the effects that it had on her and the fact that she's still in therapy. And her therapist says to her, If your father was a paraplegic, confined to a wheelchair your whole life, it would be simple for you to accept that he can't walk. But what he actually is is someone who can't give you anything you want or need. But so, fighting back, pointing out the lies, calling him out, it's useless. You can't get milk from a hardware store. <laughs> winning can't be the goal when winning isn't possible, right? What does the goal have to be? Not getting destroyed. <clears throat> Not getting destroyed is the goal. What really struck me about that, I just thought it was so wise that she said it's like trying to get milk from a hardware store. And I think all of us have dealt with toxic people and toxic relationships in our life. And so I had a few little thoughts that I wanted to share with you. Also, when she said, what does the goal have to be? Not getting destroyed. Not getting destroyed is the goal. Now, fast forward till this morning. I woke up this morning a little bit later. I slept really well last night. I lifted up my sleep mask and I couldn't believe it. It was actually kind of bright and sunny outside, which made me feel so happy because it's been raining and just very dismal lately. So I was thinking, great, I've already got my video done for tonight. I can go upstairs and have a good morning. Well, I was in the middle of doing all of my morning routine and watching the videos I wanted to watch. And usually I wait to go on Instagram until I get my work done, until I kind of get my day started. Because I have learned that there can be some things on Instagram that can kind of put me off of my track. Well, this morning, I wanted to go over to Instagram to watch a video that a friend had sent me. And I thought, while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and catch up with my DMs. And in the DMs, I got a random, not really a hater comment, but kind of a rude comment. And it just, for some reason, it hit me. It just immediately zapped my good feelings. It immediately brought out a response in me where I wanted to defend myself. I wanted to prove my point. They had zinged me and I wanted to zing them right back. And I even typed something out. It wasn't mean, but it was kind of like a comment explaining myself to them. And I thought, no, Lisa, you don't want to do that. I kind of self-parented myself out of that. And I erased it all. I got out of Instagram. I kind of sat there for a minute and I was like, gosh, you know better. You know better than to look at all of those DMs before you get started with your day. I thought, okay, let me go downstairs and just kind of shake it off and then I'll come back up and regroup. So I went downstairs and I told John about the comment and I kind of explained to him and I told him what I had written back, but that I didn't. And he said, yeah, it's kind of like that show last night. You trying to prove your point is like trying to get milk from a hardware store. Your goal is just to not get destroyed. I mean, it was like, even though that had made an impact on me last night, I hadn't really made it personal to me because I don't really have a lot of toxic people in my life. You are my friends. And I have had experiences, you know, in groups, like for instance, when I worked at restaurants, when I worked in an office, and especially when I was younger and had younger children and had to be in or put myself in mom groups. Of course, I wanted to take my children to play dates. I wanted to take my children to dance and you know, all of the other things that you do and you end up being around other moms. Well, if you've been in that situation, then you are going to identify with a lot of these traits and you're going to recognize that you too have been around some toxic people and you know it just varies a lot of people 
are unfortunate. They might be in a serious toxic relationship. They might have toxic family members, or they may have a friend that they really love that has toxic traits. So I'm not here to say, get out of that toxic relationship. I'm not here to say, this is what you need to do. I'm just here to kind of share with you my feelings and how I deal with it, how I have dealt with it in the past. And just any little thing that may help you shake it off like I shook it off this morning. I've looked up what is a toxic person. One description was a person deeply unhappy and refuses to work on themselves and is destructive with others. But another one that I saw on Pinterest says, nothing you can say or do is good enough. They comment on the smallest flaw or perceived imperfection. They drag up your past and won't allow you to be different. They act like they are fabulous and never make mistakes. They leave you feeling guilty, ashamed of who you are. They're critical, controlling, and don't think about your needs. They leave you feeling beaten, wounded, battered, bruised, and torn. I think that's a little bit more than I've ever experienced. They violate your boundaries and they never respect no. They don't care about your feelings and they like to see you suffer. It's always about them and what they think and what they want and feel. So some of us are dealing with that person that is like truly toxic. And then some people have just a few toxic traits and I want to give you some tips on how to deal with that and how to recognize it. And that way, we won't let them ruin our days or our good moods, our good juju. It will lead to a happier, healthier relationship all the way around. Okay, first we need the ability to recognize a toxic person. I am pretty good with this now. I pretty much know if I get bad vibes right from the beginning. You know, I think one of those little Pinterest clips said, you know, when you get to be this age, the first sign of bad vibes, you're out. That's kind of how I am right now, but we're not always able to do that. Sometimes we are forced to be around these people with work or with family or with a friend of a friend, you know, different social outings. So the first thing you need to do is recognize that in a person and just keep your distance. Don't get too involved with that person. Be kind, cordial, respectful, but don't get too involved. Okay, this is one of the biggest lessons that I think I have learned throughout life is if you have a toxic relationship with someone, meaning when you leave that person, you feel worse. When you're around that person, you don't really feel like your best self. I've always told Brooke and anyone else that will listen, that's what it's all about. It's not about how pretty you are, how smart you are, how rich you are, how this or that or anything. It always comes down to how you make that person feel when they are with you, when they're on the phone with you, when they're in your presence, when they're around you. How does that person make you feel? Do they make you feel good and excited and positive and comforted? and better than you did before you were even around them? Or do they make you feel deflated and frustrated and, you know, like you need to say something else worse than they did before you were ever around them? That is the sign of spending time with a toxic person. Now, the thing is, that doesn't always mean that that person is a toxic person. It doesn't mean that that person has all of those traits that I just read out to you. It doesn't mean that they only care about themselves. It doesn't necessarily mean that they are toxic. What could have happened is that your relationship has just changed. Maybe you have grown apart. Maybe your friendship has just kind of run its course and you know, here you are at two different stages of life. I had that happen years and years ago with a very dear friend. And I had to just realize that we had had so much in common for so long that kept us bonded. And that kind of superseded anything of negative, like any negative vibes or anything that would have made me feel bad because we had this bond. We had this to talk about and all of these things going. 
and then and this was back before YouTube then as my life took a different direction and her life took a different direction it got to be when we spent time together it was kind of a toxic time it just wasn't enjoyable you know we didn't have as much to talk about it led to more criticizing and critical thinking you know why is she doing that even on my side or I can't believe that she has turned into this person. And these are my thoughts that, you know, I mean, the best way you can ever learn is looking back at the bad things that you've done or even your negative thoughts and learn from those. And I have really learned that just because someone finds something else important or something else different and meaningful in their life, that doesn't make them wrong. And it isn't for me to judge. And it's vice versa. Just because I have gone a different direction and I have decided to do this with my life and make these things important doesn't mean that I'm toxic. It just means that that relationship has come to an end and it's just kind of time to move on. So I think that's a very, very important point because you don't want those feelings about a person if it's not true and if there is a way to kind of salvage that relationship then you want to look into those ways and i'll talk about that in just a little bit and before i end that another thing i want to kind of mention on being on the lookout for a toxic person or when you're friends with a person and say you meet at, I'm gonna think of something totally bizarre, say you meet at a cooking class and you bond with this person and your friends, oh, your husbands both have the same profession, you both have kids, you know, all of this stuff, and then you find out a little bit down the road that they don't really have the same life views as you do. They don't have the same morals, they might not agree with you on certain religious ideas. They might not agree with you on major political or life ideas. They may not have maybe a similar growing up experience. All of these things that can lead to tension and criticizing and resentment and nitpicking, all of these things in a relationship, then that is something that you have to be careful for. Before you even get to be too deep friends with them, do your life values basically go together? You're never gonna agree with anyone on everything, just like no one is all bad. It's just the majority. Are there enough things there for you to develop this deep relationship? If you know there's not, then you want to just stay, you know, kind of at that level of friendship. You don't want to go any further and set yourself up to be critical of them or for them to be critical of you. That is number one. Then if you have already found yourself deep in a relationship, and I truly believe this happens with a lot of couples because they don't kind of, you know, do this checklist before they get married and start this deep relationship with people. They get married, they have children, and then all of a sudden they realize they don't have the same values. They don't have the same outlook on life. They don't have the same ways they want to raise their children. And then that becomes a toxic relationship. So always think about that before you become deeply involved in a just platonic friendship or a relationship. Okay, the next thing I wanted to kind of explain, and this is where the therapist in that movie kind of hit on, is they thrive on pushing your buttons. But it can even be really small things, really small comments, little critical things that people say. Like, I really go back to either now with my videos and dealing with the things that you know people say to me and i think back to times of of course you know being around friend groups when my kids were smaller that is definitely when i was around more of that and it can even be something as small as just a little comment about what your three-month-old baby is wearing i remember brooke was born in march and we were taking her to the beach when she was, you know, four, five, six months old, where you can't put sunscreen on your baby at that time. We had her in one of those flying saucer looking things and under an umbrella. But because of the way 
the sun just bounces off the sand and I guess the little bit of time that we went from the car to the beach, she would get a little brown, a little bitty bit of tan. And she had those great big cheeks and those great big blueberry eyes. And I mean, it was gorgeous. When you looked at her, she was just like this most gorgeous baby. And instead of saying, wow, she is a gorgeous baby, she has a tan. You're not using SPF? And then what did I do? I feel like I had to prove myself. I had to explain to them that I had asked the pediatrician over and over, was anything wrong with this? And you know, I had to tell them that you can't use SPF on a baby. And then that whole time would be just ruined. And then I would feel that way about that person. So it doesn't have to be a terrible, toxic, you know, just jab, blatant. Usually it's a little bit of something just to knock you down, just to little bit. That is what I'm talking about and I want to help you on how to handle this. First of all, you don't take it personally. And I've always heard that, you know, what you say about someone else says more about you, but I didn't really get it. Now I really do. This next one is I think something we've all done. It's not up to you to try to change them. It is up to you to take care of yourself, especially, you know, when we get to be our age, you know, I think 30s, 40s, and 50s, you really understand that putting yourself first isn't selfish, that you shouldn't, you know, let them make you feel bad just to remain friends or keep that friendship. You need to just let it go, realize that you cannot change them, and it's not your job. It's not even your job to change them if you do think it's better, even if you do think you can help them. It's also not your job to prove yourself. This is something I have a really hard time with. I find it where I want to explain this is why I'm doing this, this, and this. I'm gonna try not to get too deep into it. And I have to remember, it's not my job to change anyone's mind about me. It's not my job to prove myself. My way of thinking is as long as I am being honest, I'm being caring, a good person, kind, I'm living authentically, this is my true self. What you see is what everyone sees out in the world. My parents watch my videos, my husband watches my videos, my children. This is who I am. And it's not up to me to explain myself or to prove myself. And the same thing with you. I think we go through this with friendships, family. I know a lot of you talk to me about brothers and sister-in-laws and mother-in-laws. And it's just a really big source of tension, just let it go. It's not up to you to explain it. Just let it go. And I learned this when I was watching a feminine energy video and she was talking about, you know, going on first dates and she was talking about, you know, being kind. And she said, being kind doesn't mean you're always nice. You still have to set boundaries. You can set boundaries in relationships with family, with friends, with first dates, with people you meet at groups, with I can set boundaries here on YouTube. Set those boundaries and still be kind. That doesn't mean you have to be nice. You can be quick, firm, and still kind. So after you become aware, maybe take a little step back, do a little bit of introspection, and think about how you have been interacting with them. Think, is there anything that I need to work on to maybe be more patient, maybe set better boundaries. Maybe you weren't clear with that person, the boundaries that you had. Think about everything. Think about yourself. Think about ways that you could improve. I would say every toxic relationship I've ever been in, there's probably things I could have done to make the situation better. I'm still trying to work on it and I still want to share these things with you because it's just an ongoing process. Another thing this helps you work on is your confidence. You know, when you can finally step back and realize that you don't have to prove yourself, that what they're saying says more about them than you, and you know, just maybe I was being too sensitive, you know, all of these things, this helps with your confidence. This helps you know that the next time you're around a person like this or that person, that you'll be able to handle it better. And through each experience, you become better and better. Like I'm still around, you know, lots of people a lot of times and I get a lot of little comments, but I just have to remember 
not to get upset with that person, not to try to explain myself, and just to go about my day and not let them ruin my energy. I would rather do that than be confrontational. This is a big situation. When I used to go to work outings with John and I was around other wives that had no idea how I felt, maybe they had no respect or value for a stay-at-home mom. So when I would tell them I was a stay-at-home mom, that's my dream job. To me, I get to be a stay-at-home mom. To them, maybe, hmm, you're a stay-at-home mom. It doesn't mean that I'm toxic or they're toxic. It was maybe a toxic interaction for me at that time, but that's when I step back, I grab my confidence, I don't have to explain to them anything, and I get on with my day. Okay, another thing you may need to do is think about what's going on inside yourself. What's going on to keep you in this relationship that is not good and every time you leave this person and I'm gonna I'm thinking of a particular time here so that I can give you particular feelings every time I was around a certain person I was excited to be around them because I really admired this person and then the more and more into a relationship I got, even though we had all of these things in common, each time I left this person, I left feeling less than, inadequate, down, wanting more, wanting more material things, wanting more out of John that wasn't even reasonable, rational, wanting more out of, I guess, life in general, when they weren't even things that were really important to me. This person was projecting what was important to her onto me and then making me feel bad about it and it wasn't even important to me. And it took me a while, it took me separating myself from this person, creating distance, self-reflection, what is going on with me, why am I putting up with that, why am I going around that over and over again and is any of it true? And just kind of reflecting on those things. And what happened is I became even stronger in my convictions, even stronger in the things that I want, loving John even more, even happier in my marriage. And then now I can look onto that friendship that I still have. I don't see her very often, maybe once every few years. But now when I see her, I don't have a bad feeling. I don't feel like she's toxic. I don't even leave her feeling bad. I know our dynamic. I still have like this warm feeling because there were so many things about her that I really, really loved and admired. I just know that we can't have that deep day-to-day -day phone call connection. That was back when you talked on the phone every day. And that's okay. And it's really better because now when I see her, it's almost like I remember all the good and none of the bad. And that is a wonderful thing. And honestly, that's the way I feel about my past relationships, even with guys, is I don't look back at those as toxic. No matter how toxic an event might have been at the time, no matter how toxic just a relationship was, I look back at it as growing. I try to remember all the good things. I see the things that I did wrong and the toxic things that I might have done and maybe the way I may have made them feel. And I just try to only remember the good things and learn from the bad. And then the final thing on what to do is you don't need validation from other people, meaning your husband. You know, a lot of times we'll tell our husbands a story. A lot of times I don't get the validation that I feel like I deserve. You know what I mean? Like they don't get it. And it's because it's not them. You know, John, for one thing, a guy wants to fix things. And if he can't fix what someone said to you, then he's gonna fix how you feel and he's gonna make that thing seem like nothing and he's gonna just try to make you feel better. That's usually what happens. That's why I even went back to John today and told him, thank you for bringing up that movie and helping me see it that way. Thank you. That was just like such a good thing for him to do because a lot of times, you know, we'll tell someone, and I can really see this happening in a family. Luckily, you guys, and I know I always say I had such a good family, but I really did. I grew 
up with a lot of respect between family members. We didn't have any fights. We all really love each other and we just had those boundaries and we had that respect for each other where a lot of this stuff just didn't go on. But I have experienced it with other families. I have heard it from you guys and I know like for instance, I remember a friend and her sister-in-law and they were always kind of, I don't know, there was a lot of competition and a lot of things that were said back and forth. And I remember, you know, her trying to get validation from her husband, but yet it's her husband's mom or her husband's brother's wife or something like that. And a lot of times you're not gonna get that validation. Well, that doesn't mean you don't feel the way you feel, but you can create those boundaries and honor your feelings and, you know, just do what you think is right. Maybe take some steps back and just do the best that you can with that situation. Even just taking a little bit of time or maybe away from a relationship or anything like that, friends or loved ones or family, sometimes when you take those few steps back, they may realize it and ask you, you know, what's going on? And then if you nicely, with kindness, you don't want to say you always, you never, you want to kindly, gently, you know, respectfully express your opinions. Hopefully by this time you have reflected on things that you might have done or something you might have taken wrong and you explain to them how you feel and, you know, how you see things. This person may freak out. <laughs> They will probably twist it around and turn it back on you and tell you, you are the one that changed. You are the one that's crazy. A lot of times, even if you say it nice to them, they will really explode. And their defense mechanism will make them attack you. And a lot of times they are gonna go deep. They're gonna go with the zingers. They're gonna really attack you personally because they can't handle it. Remember, they're people that don't really want to work on themselves. They put themselves number one, usually, and they're not interested in changing. They're not interested in it. You know, you're the one that's crazy. You're the one that is asking for it. You're the one that is provoking them. So a lot of times you will get that response. So wrapping this up, after you've done those things and you get that response, decide, is this relationship worth working on? And if it is, then you have to just do the things that it takes to, like she said in the movie, you're not here to change them. You're not trying to get milk from the hardware store. What are you trying to do? You're trying to survive. And it's gonna make you uncomfortable to kind of put yourself first and to not feel selfish and not to just suck it up. But when it comes to things like this, if you just suck it up every time, it's, you know, the word toxic, there it is. It's going to be toxic for you. It's gonna to be toxic for your health. And it's really gonna be toxic for that relationship. Maybe like in a family situation, maybe try to limit your time around that person. Remember when they make those comments, it's not personal. You don't have to explain. You can't win the game. It's their rules. Just all of these things that I'm telling you and that I am having to think about. When I used to go to work functions and, you know, I'm around the other wives, I have to remember not to be too sensitive and I have to remember even with YouTube comments, I should not have to explain myself because I'm not ashamed of what I'm doing. I'm here for the good. I'm here to better your life. I'm here to make sure you just live your life to the fullest, that you build your dream life, that you don't let aging get you down, that you don't let toxic people get you down. And I feel good about what I'm doing. So it's not up to me to change how they feel about Zara. It's not up to me to change how they feel about carnivore. It's not up to me. It's up to me to share with you all of the good things that I want to share with you and make your life better. So I hope that that is what I'm doing and I hope that this helped and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.